Hey friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. Uh, the sharp eye among you might have noticed one of the shelves is missing. Yeah, when my grandkids were over, they pulled on it and I got to repair it and put something else up there. But that's the way life goes, right? Grandkids can be destructive, just like when my kids were young, they were destructive. It's the way it works, right? I've got something, a just-in-case kind of knife for you today. This is the Harns Conch. 14 bucks. This knife costs $14. Now, don't tune away yet. I'm telling you, this is a good glove box knife. One of those knives that you just put away and forget about it until all of a sudden you need a knife. Are you for certain that you're going to have the right knife with you if something happens? This knife, 14C, 14C28, and I wish 8CR14 MOV which is a good budget steal in my opinion. It'll keep that edge for that entire emergency, I venture to bet. 8CR14 is a whole lot better than most of the basic steals that we had 20 years ago. A lot of the steals that we still have today, you know, that expensive kitchen knives have, have worse steel than this. You know, this is roughly 0.8% carbon. You know, most knives out there, if they don't have a label on it what steel it is, it's 0.4, maybe up to 0.6% carbon. Now, carbon is one of the main carbides in there, the main thing that gives it, you know, edge retention and durability uh, of wear. So 8CR14 really isn't bad. This knife is a flipper. You've got, you know, a hole there. You can flick it through the hole. This one's got a bad detent, but you can flick it through that hole if you want to as well. Liner lock. We've got a cordage ripper or a seatbelt ripper back here. We've got a glass breaker, a tungsten tip. So it's not just a piece of steel. It's got tungsten at the tip of that. And we've got an emergency whistle. Now it's going to be loud for a second. I'm going to show you right now what this is going to sound like. That's a pretty good whistle. And you get all of that for less than 14 bucks at amazon.com. Those of you who don't live in the United States, Unfortunately, Canadians have a tougher time getting this knife imported into Canada, but the rest of the world, you know, as long as flipper knives are legal where you live, AliExpress has got this for 14 bucks as well, just under 14 bucks. So my home audience, I'm sorry, it's going to be tough for you to get this knife, but that's just the way it goes, unfortunately. You know, Canadians, you guys are about 10% of my audience. And I appreciate you an awful lot. And unfortunately, I just can't do reviews of only knives that are available in Canada because most knives in Canada cost way too much. <laughs> of course, there are exceptions. I try to do Canadian knives, but I just can't always do it. Now, I'm going to do a review of this. It's not going to be my full review. I'm not going to give you all the measurements of everything. It's a $13.90 knife. It doesn't deserve a, you know, super complete review because... I'm not recommending this as a knife that you carry, but this is a great choice if you're on a budget, but you want something to stick, you know, in an emergency spot somewhere, like a glove box, or, you know, leave it at the cabin, or whatever. So, let me tell you about it. Let's begin with a size comparison with the Ontario Rat 1. So, yeah. It's a little bit smaller, but not a lot smaller. It's a good full-size knife. Now, my hands are, you know, just barely into the extra-large range, and I get a full four-finger grip on this thing. It'll be adequate for most people if you need to cut with it. This kind of cutout back here, it's kind of odd, but it's not all that uncomfortable. If you have to reach forward, you know, that works okay, and you can get a decent amount of force behind that. We've got a hollow grind on this. We've got a swedge up here. It's pretty good for piercing into things. It's fairly tough on the tip. By the way, 8CR14, Rockwell is usually around 58, can be 59, which is pretty good. It's not terribly hard to sharpen. The sharpening on this isn't done terribly well, but it's fairly sharp and it cuts okay. I would recommend that you sharpen it yourself before you stick it in your glove box or whatever and you know forget about it until you need it. You know, the sharpness is not big enough. You know, it ends, you know, before, so it looks a little wonky there. The grind angles are all messed up on this one, just like most knives are. And if you've seen my video about that that I posted 
if you watch this right away, I posted it yesterday or the day before. Please do share that video with people that you, other reviewers that you watch. Uh, if other reviewers don't respond to this thing, the plan is dead in the water. If people really don't care enough to start measuring this and telling the world what they find, nothing's going to change. It'll just be me preaching to myself and a few other people that care. Now, I know a lot of people care, but do we care enough? That's the question. Do we care enough? Anyhow, back to the blade. So the blade's pretty good that way. It is over three inches. Where's my ruler? I usually do my measurements, you know, with the precision Mitutoyu, but, you know, we're just going to do it with something like this. Let's see. The blade length, three and an eighth, three and three sixteenths, roughly something like that. Uh, cutting edge length, three and a quarter. So, yeah, you got a decent amount of edge here. You do have, you know, a bit of a, <laughs> I guess, a fuller of sorts right there. The detent on mine is very weak, so it doesn't work that well to flick it out. And it's not the most comfortable thing to flick out. But you can use your thumb up there if you want to roll it out with your thumb. That works just fine. Or you can use the other hole underneath there and flick it out that way. And I will be adjusting the detent. I got a whole series of videos on how to fix detents. But, you know, that's not a big deal. Lock up. It's almost exactly where I like a brand new knife to lock up. There are washers in there. Blade plate, ever so tiny bit side to side, but it's there. It's easy enough to get in there to release the lock with that jimping there. Alignment, hey, pretty close to right down the middle on mine, so that's not bad. Pocket clip, it's a big tip down pocket clip, but uh, if I was storing this in my glove box, I'd just take that off and get rid of it completely. Don't need that you know, for the most part. And then we've got the cordage ripper back here. I've not taken this apart yet. We'll take it apart and see if we can easily get that out to sharpen it if we need to. And if we can, I'm going to sharpen mine up. Lanyard hole back here. So that's not bad. And there's the tungsten tip on the glass breaker. It's great to have in a car just in case. And there's the hole that you blow into. And there's the tonal exit hole for if you need a whistle. So it's got lots of that stuff. The flipper, it's sort of a forward swept flipper. No jimping on it, but works just fine to deploy the blade. Light switch method or, you know, just pushing down on it. That works just fine as well. Like I said, I'll fix the detent on it. Badging, it just says conch, 8CR14 MOV right there. And on this side, it says harns. I don't like badging on the bevels. You know, they had a big flat area they could have put it on, but hey, it's not a big deal. It's under 14 bucks. We're going to tear it down now. We've got T6 screws here, so I'm going to be careful. I'm going to try not to strip that out. The main screw here, it's got some Loctite on it, but it came apart without too much problem. Uh, the other screws, looks like they've got a tiny bit of attempted Loctite on some of them, but it came apart. You know, they're free spinning, so I had to do the two screwdriver thing. Yeah, that's fine. White nylon washers. There's a D-shaped pivot pin here. There's a D-shape on this side. So, hey, yeah, that's not free spinning. Stainless steel ball on the detent. There's the glass breaker. It just fits in back here. Uh, you know, the screw hole, square screw, just fits right in there. That's just fine. I took that out because I wanted to try... I wanted to try to get that blade out. Now, this is just uh, polypropylene or something. It's not G10. And it's pressed into place. You can see that little bit sticking out right there. I'm going to see if I can take it apart anyways. You know, it wants to pivot on that hole. So let's just see if I can take that out. I pushed right into where I cut myself really badly there before. That's why I said ow. It's healed on top, but it's still tender in there. And in any case, here's the little blade. So the blade can come out. Um, yeah, I could sharpen this in my sharpening rig. I'm going to sharpen this up even better than it is. And I'm going to sharpen the blade as well before I put it back together. And I'm going to try to fix the detent as well before I put it back together again. But yeah, it's very simple, very straightforward. I sharpened it to about 20 microns. Oh, whatever the F grit is, I'll put that on the screen for that equivalent. That's finer than it really needed, but yeah. I was there anyway, so I, that's what I did. I adjusted the detent, so the detent is better. So 
works better to deploy the blade, but I got to use a fair bit more pressure to disengage that lock to close it, but you can still easily do it with one hand. So we got that. Uh, still, the detent's not great. Uh, it was poorly made. That whole system was poorly made. So <laughs> it's not that big a deal to me because this is not, you know, a fidget knife. It's a, you know, last case emergency tool that does a lot of different things and it works quite well. So I'm happy with this thing for the price. I very much totally recommend this if you need a knife to put away in an emergency kit somewhere and your budget's tight. If those two things apply to you, this I think is a really good choice. It's a cheap knife, but it works. Thank you to my supporters. You guys are stunning. I appreciate your monthly help every month. It's just great. And uh, you know, it's not an awful lot of money. I get around a hundred bucks a month from you guys. But a hundred bucks really does help because finances are tight, really tight, touch and go all the time. So I appreciate all your help. If you want to support the channel, patreon.com slash CCE, or you click the join button down there and I'd appreciate your help an awful lot. And remember friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.